Wow, okay. I don't even know where to begin with this video. Um, this is the video I've been building to since my channel began. A theory so complete, speculation so absurd, ideas so integral. If my recent theories on Pixar films have been any example, you'll see that I'm correct when I say brainstorming spawns truth. The only video you probably have to watch before this one would be my very first Pixar multiverse theory. It's only 10 or 15 minutes long, I'll link it in the top right corner box now. The rest I think I can summarize for a few minutes here. Alright, so in 2015 I began by speculating on how Remy from the film Ratatouille controls Linguini with his hair. It was a very short and pathetic video, but it began to come to some lore conclusions. I started 2016 by building a massive timeline of hidden events by piecing together the lives of characters such as Anton Ego and Chef Gusteau, deeply tying them together through the old woman at the beginning of the film. Later that year I used the unifying factor of a mystery woman known as Emma Jean to directly prove how at least Up, Toy Story, and Inside Out all took place in the same universe, and a fractured family tree is split across those films. I also redid my Ratatouille timeline here. In 2017, I began brainstorming ideas on both these theories, and in 2018 I solved everything for Ratatouille and unsolved the mystery of Andy's dad from Toy Story. So as you can see, we've been developing this multiverse theory for quite some time. And finally, earlier this very year, I made my longest theory ever by a long shot, dissecting Darla and P. Sherman's family from Finding Nemo, inverting the famous Pixar theory, and managing to, in a stunning turn of events, tie it and Ratatouille both to the Emma Jean theories. Now, I've made theories on many other Pixar films, but either they aren't relevant here, or they don't have any proof of existing in this little Pixar universe but these five movies. The speculative mind blow you're about to receive, I have never, in the over three and a half years I've been theorizing, been so unequivocally excited, so absolutely hyped, and so hyperactively shook to bring you what you're about to see. I myself didn't even know it was coming until my aha moment upon writing the Finding Nemo Theory trilogy, and if you aren't open to this sort of thing, like brainstorming between the lines of Pixar films, that's fine. You can say, oh they're just movies, but if you're into this kind of thing, like Pixar Studios themselves is, hiding easter eggs across their movies and revealing them, then the treat you're about to receive is something I don't even know how to explain fully. And now that we're all caught up, I'm so excited to finally do this. Hello. I'm the Theorizer, and that little pre-intro monologue was necessarily atrociously long, but I can't stall anymore. Here's what I've discovered about these five films, and their directly pentagonal connections. So first of all, I call it the Californian Quintet, because Toy Story is implied to take place in California, within a location more specifically known as the Tri-County area. Inside Out mostly takes place in San Francisco, and Up takes place wherever it does, but it's all directly tied in with these two other movies. But upon tying in Morro Bay and Renata's American backstory during the Finding Nemo theories from weeks ago, that also brings Finding Nemo and Ratatouille into the mix here, making it five Pixar franchises at least that take place in this mini-universe within California. Films like WALL-E and The Incredibles have their own timeline, but I've noticed that the focus of this little timeline seems to be smart animals that think and talk as well as humans can. And who knows, maybe Monsters Inc. stores are breaching space-time and poking not back in time, like the famous Pixar theory states, but rather into a whole different branch of the Pixar multiverse. This one. Which of course makes sense then, given the appearance of Boo's room and the easter eggs found throughout. Anyways, Finding Nemo has astronomical amounts of proof stating that both It, Finding Dory, and the Incredibles short film Bound In all take place in this miniverse. But Ratatouille is, for now, based only in assumption from the concepts of animal intelligence and Renata moving to the US. But that problem is what I'm solving here. I mean, I can't just leave that gobsmacking ending to my Finding Nemo Theory trilogy just sitting there forever, so let's now go into that. 
Riley Anderson is seen in the Marine Life Institute of Finding Dory on a class field trip to Morro Bay, coming from San Francisco. Its placement in this universe is quite clear, obvious, easy, but Ratatouille, all we know from my fervent theorizing is that Linguini's mother moved from Paris to America after getting pregnant because of Gusteau. She eventually moved back and died there, but Renata Linguini isn't the only mystery redhead in this pentology of films. There are two more, who come frighteningly close to fitting Renata's description. For those still somehow unaware, Emma Jean is a mystery woman who was Carl Fredrickson's previous love interest in the film Up. This was openly confirmed by the directors. Now, she was never actually seen in the movie, but her name was seen as the sender of a letter to Carl and Ellie, which is on Andy Davis's wall from Toy Story 3. Emma was Carl's love interest at a time right before he married his childhood best friend Ellie, and though Emma Jean divorced Carl, they all remained very good friends. Again, this was literally all revealed by the actual director, Pete Docter, in an interview with the Carlin brothers. It's mind-blowing, really, but this all leaves basically one huge question. Who is Emma Jean in the movies? Do we see anyone who actually fits her criteria? I keep looking back to Carl and Ellie's wedding because the couple in the first row appears to be the perfect age, the perfect excitement level, the perfect everything. But we need to test the genetics before it can ever truly become on my radar. So let's finally go deeper. If Emma Jean is best friends with Carl and Ellie, then she's bound to be at their wedding. There's no shred of doubt based on what we know about their relationships. What we need to do is eliminate the people seen here. Emma Jean's significance in being a red herring in Toy Story 3 is integral and means she'd be here at the wedding in the very least given her massive friendship with the Fredricksons. The likelihood that she is near the front and with the eccentric people is also high given her elusiveness but importance everywhere else. So with this knowledge intact, we move on to the third and final mystery woman, established a few weeks ago in my Finding Nemo Theory trilogy, Darla's mother. Darla has red hair, and we established that it was more likely that her mother, over father, had red hair, given Philip Sherman's genetics. He and Darla's dad show none of her genes. If there's one key thing that's notable in all of this, it's that there is one major consistency that can be seen. Miraculously, Renata and Mommy Darla both have red hair. Linguini's mother is all but visually confirmed to follow this trait, given Linguini's strikingly rare genetic makeup, which is nothing like Gusto's. Darla is the same, and Emma Jean could also have this trait, judging from the average hair color of the people at the wedding. So are they all the same person? I jokingly exaggerated this at the end of the Nemo theories, but while I don't think that's the case, I do think this consistency could mean something more. I believe that we can pin down the years all of these franchises take place by using one key detail, the fact that all three women are the Linguini sisters. Speculation territory, unevidential hypothesis. Warning, if you are a hyper-realistic person that is out to debunk my theories, look away. This is the part where I brainstorm like mad. Additionally, I'm saying it here so you don't need to comment that it's ridiculous as clarification. Oh, but you will. You will. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. Brainstorming like this has led to such revelations as the entire Finding Nemo Theory trilogy, so brace yourself for what's to come. This will not be factual, but I'm about to state a bunch of things I can work off of. Oh boy. Due to this whole recap and now finding and tying evidence together, I'm gonna have to throw up all my ideas right now and sort them out over the course of like a week. Ah, uh, Pixar, why do you do this? Emma remarried and is a Jean. This is key. We don't know her true last name. Wishing you were here in Australia, like Darla's mother, whose appearance we only deduce based off of what is implied. She is Australian now, but perhaps not always. It's possible she moved there after meeting Darla's father when he traveled to America to work at the Institute, assuming he did that for a while pre-Nemo. Finally, Renata Linguini. Only the last name, but she's the second confirmed mystery mom who has the orange hair rarity of Pixar films. The only other one that exists for certain is Ellie, or at least as a non-dyed child. Shockingly enough, 
stuff many have considered Ellie to be the sibling to Emma Jean prior to the reveals. This has been discussed before, but never ever in the history of existence in this context. If she is related to Emma, then that gives evidence to the notion that Emma too is a redhead, confirming all of this if we could establish a familial relationship. But that final question posed two and a half years ago by myself must be answered first. Who is Emma Jean married to now? In this video so far, we've taken the much needed time to recap all I've done. And then we established the main theory proving who the three sisters could be, if they're sisters at all, brainstorm style. But the proof is there for something multiverse related. Next time I'll solve Emma's new love interest amongst the rest I just posed and create a final family tree. This was just getting everything back into the groove, back into the loop, putting out all the evidence, all the speculation, all the brainstorming. I will spend an entire week trying to solve this if, if there is any possible way to do that. Everything loops back. This guy, Gary, Jerry, whatever his name is, who relates to Emma Jean, who relates to Andy, who gave him the toy, who fixed the toy. <gasps> but Emma's last name is Jean now, but how does eye color change Jerry's identity? How does Riley have a smartphone in Nemo's 2004 universe? Ratatouille's short film star is Linguini's brother? Chess piece is all. Only other old guy in Pixar at this timeline coordinate. Too much, as you can see. I need the time to regroup and organize now that everything's out on the table. Until then, please subscribe so you don't miss the biggest Pixar reveals I've ever done. Still yet to come. Until then, I'm the Theorizer. Theorizer.